What's this world coming to when you can only get 24 years out of your favorite router power cord? Fortunately, there's a quick, easy, and inexpensive way to get your power tool back in service. So let's go ahead and get started. I picked up this router in 1993. It was one of the first professional quality power tools that I had purchased. And as you can see, years of wear and tear have finally frayed the cable right at the strain relief. With the internet, finding replacement parts is really quite easy. Just keep in mind that most power tools will have a type or a version along with the model number. Uh, you'll find it noted on the data plate uh, like that you see here. The one I finally settled on was from Buckeye Tool Supply on Amazon.com. Uh, the reason this was important to me is because it was a Porter Cable OEM replacement part. It was part number A11126. When you're looking for a cable, the critical thing to look for or look out for is really the strain relief. Many aftermarket cables, they either didn't come with one or they have one that's an improper size for the tool. For this application, I also needed some closed-end crimp connectors, and I picked those up at the local home improvement store. Disassembling the router is actually quite straightforward. There are two screws that hold the top cover in place. With that out of the way, you can see how the cable is wired. Uh, the cable neutral, or the white wire, is connected to the red wire on the router motor. The cable hot, or the black wire, is wired to the router black that goes into the switch. And the green ground wire is screwed to the housing using an eyelet. The router leads themselves are pretty short, so removing the switch will give you more room to work. Now you could just snip the wires as close to the connectors as possible, uh, but I wanted to preserve their full length. Uh, cutting the shielding and then using pliers to coax open the metal ferrules, I was able to expose the bare wires. Remove the two screws that hold the cord clamp and secure the cable strain relief. This will free up the cable end. Finally, remove the small screw that attaches the ground cable to the metal housing. This now completes the disassembly. So now we need to prep the new cable. Uh, you can use the worn cable that you just removed as a template. In this case, all of the leads uh, are the same length. So mark out the length of the new cable. Then use wire cutters to trim them to length. Next, you'll need to strip back the insulation from each wire. The ground wire only needs about a quarter of an inch removed from the insulation as the eyelet crimps onto the insulation as well. Both the neutral and the hot wires need about 3 eighths of an inch of the insulation removed. Make sure the strands of copper wire are twisted together. This will prevent any stray wires from sticking out of, from the sides of the connectors and that could potentially cause an arc. The ground eyelet uses what's called a twin lock crimping system. I find it's easier to first load the connector into the crimping pliers, then slide it over the exposed wire. This way you're sure that the wire is inserted properly and then you don't end up knocking the connector off the wire with the pliers. Um, repeat this crimp for the second twin lock that then locks the uh, eyelet onto the insulation. Okay, since we're halfway there and if you like what you're seeing, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Or if you'd like to see more, you could always hit the subscribe button. Go ahead, I'll wait. Thanks. Believe it or not, it really helps promote the channel and interest for new viewers. Making the final connections on the wires will be easier with the cable secure. The strain relief will fit into a notch in the housing and the corresponding notch in the cable clamp. Secure it using the two machine screws. Next, secure the ground cable to the metal housing with its machine screws through the eyelet. Since the closed end connectors are insulated, you'll need to use a different notch in your crimping pliers. You should see an area clearly marked as insulated on your pliers. Again, for ease of installation, 
Insert the connector into your pliers first. Make sure the bare copper wires are twisted together. Then insert the wires firmly into the connector while holding the pliers. When they're fully inserted, squeeze the plier handles firmly together to set the crimp. Give the connector a little tug to make sure it's secure. Then repeat the process for the other wires. For both connections, make sure that you don't have the wires running into the armature or the stator of the motor. You can now secure the switch. And reinstall the housing cover. The final test. Plug it in and hit the switch. We're now ready to make some wood chips. So there you have it. For under $20 and about a 20 minute investment in time, I have a brand new cable and a router that's as good as new. Hopefully it'll last for another 25 years. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Thanks for watching.